This is part 8 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the significance of launch settings.json file in an ASP.NET project. You'll find this file in the properties folder in Solution Explorer. The settings in this file are used when we run this ASP.NET Core project either from Visual Studio or by using .NET Core CLI. The important point to keep in mind is this file is only required on our local development machine. We do not need it for publishing our ASP.NET Core application. If there are certain settings that you want your ASP.NET Core application to use when you publish and deploy your app, store those settings in this appsettings.json file. We usually store our application configuration settings in this file. We can also have environment specific appsettings.json files. For example, appsettings.staging.json for the staging environment. Similarly, for the development environment, we'll have appsettings.development.json. In addition to these appsettings.json files, we also have other configuration sources like environment variables, user secrets, command line arguments, and even our own custom configuration source. More on these different configuration sources and appsettings.json file in our next video. Now, if we take a look at the settings in this launch settings.json file, notice we've got two profiles, IAS Express and another profile with the same name as that of our project, which is employee management. Now, when we run this project from Visual Studio by pressing Control F5 or just F5, then this profile, IAS Express, is used. Let's actually run our project by pressing Control F5. Notice the port number in the address bar, 15410. Where is it configured? Well, that's in our launch profile, IS Express. The settings for this profile are right here. Notice application URL, the port number is configured here, 15410, which is what we see in the browser address bar. If we want to change it, we can do so using application URL. Similarly, we can also configure SSL port. And here, we're also setting this environment variable, ASP.NET Core underscore environment, to development. We can change this value to staging or production, depending on whether we are running this project in staging or production environment. We can also add new environment variables. These environment variables are available throughout our ASP.NET Core application, and we can include code that conditionally executes depending on the value of these environment variables. For example, if we take a look at this startup.cs file, notice this piece of code right here. We are checking if the environment is development. Since we have set the environment variable to development, this condition is going to return true and this piece of code will be executed, meaning on a development environment, developer exception page is displayed. Now, if we are running this same app on a staging environment, then on that staging environment, we'll set this environment variable to staging. That means this condition right here is going to return false and this piece of code will not be executed, meaning on another environment other than development, the developer exception page is not displayed. So we have the code conditionally executing depending on the value of the environment variables. We'll discuss environment variables and the developer exception page in detail in our upcoming videos. Back on our launch settings.json file, as the name implies, this file contains launch profiles. The profiles to launch and run our ASP.NET Core project on our local development machine. At the moment, in this file, we have two launch profiles. This first profile, IIS Express, is used by default when we run the project directly from Visual Studio by pressing Control F5 or just F5. This second profile, which has the same name as that of our project, Employee Management, this profile is used when we run this ASP.NET Core project using the .NET Core CLI. Notice the port number at which our application is running and listening for the incoming HTTP request. It is 5000 and that port number is configured right here. So this proves when we run the project using .NET Core CLI, this profile, employee management is used. Now, if we take a look at this drop-down list, notice both the profiles are listed here. By default, Visual Studio uses 
IAS Express profile, we can change this to Employee Management. When we do this and run the project, Visual Studio launches .NET Core CLI and .NET Core CLI runs our project. Let's prove this. First, let's shut our application down and run the project from Visual Studio. We expect Visual Studio to launch .NET Core CLI, so we should see another command prompt vendor popping up and .NET Core CLI running our project. There we go. Notice the port number, it's 5000. That's the port number configured within our employee management launch profile right here. Let's stop our application. Now let's open the project file. Notice this ASP.NET Core hosting model element. This element value along with the command name property value determines the internal and external web server to use. Remember in ASP.NET Core we have two web servers, an internal web server which is the Kestrel server and an external web server which can be IIS, Nginx or Apache. The external web server is commonly called as reverse proxy server. We discussed this in detail in our previous video. The point that I'm trying to make is this ASP.NET Core hosting model element value along with this command name property value determines the internal and external web server to use. This command name property can have a value of IIS Express, Project or IIS. Now let's look at a chart that shows the internal and external web server used. If we run our ASP.NET Core project using a launch profile where the command name property is set to project, then the ASP.NET Core hosting model element value in the project file is completely ignored and only one web server is used and that is Kestrel. Let's prove this. Notice in Visual Studio, we have this launch profile selected, employee management. And for this launch profile, the command name is set to project. This means the ASP.NET Core hosting model element value in this project file is completely ignored. Irrespective of the value that we have for this element in process or out of process, if we run this project using this launch profile where command name is set to project, our application will be always hosted out of process and only one web server is used and that is Kestrel. And if you remember from our previous videos in this series with Kestrel, the name of the process that hosts and runs our application is .NET.exe. And within the startup.cs, we have the code that displays the name of the process that hosts and runs our ASP.NET Core project. So if I run our project right now from Visual Studio using this employee management launch profile where the command name is set to project, then the process name should be .NET. There we go. Notice the process name is .NET. Now, if we are running our ASP.NET Core project using a launch profile where the command name is set to IIS Express and if the ASP.NET Core hosting model element value is in process, then only one web server is used and that is IIS Express. So in this case, our ASP.NET Core project will be hosted inside the IIS Express worker process, which is IISexpress.exe. Let's prove this now. First, let's stop our project. In the drop-down list here, let's select IIS Express as the launch profile and notice for this profile, the command name is IIS Express and within our project file, ASP.NET Core Hosting Model has a value of in process. So when we run this project now from Visual Studio using this IIS Express profile, then this project should be hosted inside IIS Express worker process, which is IISexpress.exe and that's what should be displayed in the browser. There we go. Now if we set the ASP.NET Core hosting model element to out of process, then Kestrel is used as the internal web server and IIS Express is used as the external web server. In this case, IIS Express is just a reverse proxy facing the internet, taking the incoming HTTP request and forwarding it to Kestrel. It's the Kestrel server that hosts and runs our ASP.NET Core project. In case of Kestrel, the process that hosts our application 
is .NET.exe. So if we run our project with these settings in place, the process name that is displayed in the browser must be .NET. Let's prove this. First, let's stop the project. We already have the IAS Express Launch Profile selected in the project file. Let's change the setting to Out of Process and run our project. There we go. Notice the process name is .NET. Similarly, if the command name is IAS and the SPNet Core Hosting Model Element value is in process, then our application is hosted using only one web server and that is IAS. And if the ASP.NET Core Hosting Model Element value is out of process, then Kestrel is used as internal web server and IAS is used as the external web server, that is as a reverse proxy server. We'll discuss deploying our ASP.NET Core application to IAS in our upcoming videos. We can change the settings in launch settings.json file directly by editing this file or we can do that by using the graphical user interface provided by Visual Studio. To access the graphical user interface, right click on the project and then select properties. On the properties window, click on the debug tab and in the drop down list right here, we see both the profiles. Select the profile that you want to change. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching.